Hello guys, Dr. Bass here. Today I would like to discuss with you about contact resistance. In fact, electrical contact resistance and heat loss with the use of these high power molecel and these uh, copper bus bar, what I would call these hybrid because they have nickel on, uh, on these to make the spot well easy. So without no more weight, let's do it. All right, so what you can see here, it's a setup where I have um, spot welded two uh, P45B from Monicell uh, to these kind of bus bars here. So I will explore with you uh, the kind of uh, uh, re contact resistance that we have and also the uh, heat loss from these bus bar at the kind of current that these cells are supposed to do because these are supposed to be 45 amp continuous and the peak is probably in the matter of uh, 100 amp. So is, is it serious to think about these using with these cells? So what you can see here, I have uh, connected two cells in series using these kind of bus bars. And I have my electronic load connected to uh, these uh, that I've set to 10 amp, which make easy the calculation of the resistance and also the power loss from each uh, section of this bus bar. So I will power the electronic load right now. Sorry for the, uh, <laughs> the blower. It's because it's a thousand, uh, 1200 watt um, electronic load. So it is set at N amp. I uh, will activate it. All right. And with this multimeter, I will measure the um, voltage drop. So you will see that uh, the cells are fully charged. This is um, while draining 10 amp. I have All right, you see voltage dropping a little bit. So 7.7 .7 volt I put it in millivolt. So what I will do is I will touch the middle. I will show you with this one so I will touch the middle of the cell here. Uh, this is the section where um, it's uh, accessible to directly to the nickel tab of the cell here. And I will touch this section here to see what kind of voltage loss between the nickel and the middle of the cell that we have. And then we'll check between this section and the side here. Sorry, it's a little bit. All right. So I have 10 amp with one probe on the middle of the cell and the other just next to it i have minus six millivolt or i can do the opposite to have like six or seven millivolt and the other side it's wait a minute it appeared to be less because yeah probably the current flow is different in this area but it's like two millivolt i will check the other side yeah, 0 0.7. Okay, so we have an idea here. And then, oh, I have 3 to 4 millivolt between the nickel uh, close to the copper sheet and the middle of the cell. If I check for the other side, it's about the same, 3.8 millivolt. So this is 3.8 millivolt between this area here. Alright, this area here and this part here. So I will check compared to the copper next to it. So it's about the same as when I measure directly on the copper. I'll try to zoom a little bit. Alright, so measuring from the middle here side here 3.7 millivolt and if I do for the next one it's about 3.7 millivolt too and the second weld here yeah 2.9 and 3 so we can have range to about 3.2 millivolt at 10 amp which means 0 0.32 million resistance Right, and if I check between the middle and the cooper, yeah, 
fall by one. Yeah. Not that much. So that means that this kind of contact resistance between the ultrasonically weld nickel to the copper is great because the voltage loss is very low. As I have a 0 0.1 millivolt here. Okay, so you will get a better view here. So if I check here, between the middle and side 2.9 and the other side here yeah about 3.2 so we can say that this one is about 3 millivolt loss or 0 0.3 my uh, million and the second one should be about the same well 3.7 yeah on this one so this is normal because on one of these there is a positive and the other is negative the positive is always thicker so on the cell this positive here is thicker uh, material than the cell can itself. So yeah, so you see here, yeah. So this metal is thinner than the top positive here. So that's why for all the resistance is different. All right. So if I check between the two cells directly, I have seven. 0.8 millivolt loss between the two cells in series on the tab through this bus bar here okay so this is like uh, you know p45b typically is about uh, six to seven uh, million and now we're talking about a series connection between those two cells of Wow, well, yeah, 0 0.7 uh, million, which means that the series connection is about a tenth of the of the resistance of a cell, right? So at 10 amp, having that kind of power, it's a it's a, a few milliwatt of power. That's not that much. All right, now let's see with my flare camera. So you see here the two cells. One of these is at 33 degrees Celsius, and the second one here, sorry for the reflection, I'll try to compensate for that, yeah, second one, 33, 34, 35, about this temperature. However, what you can see here is the bus bar appear to be colder, however, it is not. It's because the emissivity of this material is different than the plastic, the emissivity of the plastic of the cell. So if I paint this one just for the test, if I paint this one in black with this camera, I will be able to better distinguish uh, how the heat distinct, uh, produced by this bus bar, which I will do right now. So I will use this black paint uh, made for a stove and I just um, used uh, masking tape to just get the conductive part in order to connect the, the battery and I will paint these surfaces so you will be able to see the temperature with the infrared camera alright so you see I have painted these surfaces so with the camera we will be able to better see the um, you already see here and here the two little spot that seems to be at higher temperature um, I will take a uh, different uh, point of view so right so already what you can see is um, yeah the two little spot here yeah so you see exactly here and here these are um, warmer than the rest of the cell because these are uh, nickel with uh, tin metal and less conductive but you can see there's 30 about 30 degree and the rest of the material is 28. Okay, let's go to calibration again so you see 28 and the middle is 30. so about two degrees celsius difference so let's switch the other side of uh, this battery so we can see the other side okay so and by the way I'm using four wire uh, Kelvin method for the electronic load so um, I have the current carrying wire here and this one and this one and this one are the sense wires 
so it's interesting to see how uh, the black paint is actually affecting you see just a little bit here on above here um, this is the area where there's no paint so it makes you believe this area make you believe that it's colder but it is not it's just that the way that this surface is transmitting the heat through this bolometer uh, uh, sensor here um, it's uh, different and it need to be corrected so um, I'm using black paint in order to do that so you see uh, it's about yeah 30 degrees for this one and 30 degrees for this one too so this is at uh, 10 amp uh, current so yeah if this uh, those cells will be inside a battery pack we'll have a derating of temperature and probably the temperature will be higher because of the confinement and that is normal but at least at ambient temperature on a single surface like that at something like uh, yeah 21 degrees celsius ambient this one has 10 amp seems to be uh, pretty uh, stable uh, at about 30 degrees celsius at the tab directly so you see here the two tabs are still warmer 32 and 31 for this one mm -hmm. compared to the rest of the bus bar which is at 30 so th this is exactly two degrees celsius difference so then we can conclude that the nickel uh, that is on this surface uh, relative to uh, this copper sheet uh, doesn't bring a lot of uh, resistance uh, added resistance to the uh, the whole boss bar uh, yeah it's more resistive but uh, with the current that uh, I'm using it's 10 amp and if you have let's say a pack with 10 P of these it's already uh, 100 amp continuous and on a continuous way with this one temperature does not rise a lot i can double check again and it's 32 degrees celsius directly uh, at the tab here so yeah so these bus bars seems to make a uh, very great job and um these are ultrasonically well welded and i still don't understand why they they've plated in copper the uh the bottom of these um it's just a plating um, I will say it's it doesn't help to uh, uh, spot well directly to the cell but maybe they're they have their own reasons maybe it's for ultrasonic uh, bounding maybe the interface of the ultrasonic bounding is better on uh, Cooper to Cooper so that's why they probably um, uh, uh, um, plated these all right, so I appreciate. Uh, I hope you appreciate it, guys, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.